you wouldn't mind just uh, popping your microphones on mute for the time being. And then at 8.15, I reckon that's when we'll conclude the formal portion. So you'll be able to take your microphones off mute and we'll all have a chat together. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Miranda. I'm your Whiskey and Almond Events Coordinator. Thank you so much for joining me here tonight. And as you can tell, I've got a special surprise guest, fresh from Tasmania, Mr. William McHenry himself. Bill? Yep. Pleasure to have you in. Thanks, Miranda. No worries. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, tonight is a really special one. So exactly, almost exactly one year ago today, we tasted a lineup of McHenry single casks, completely bourbon cask orientated. And that was a physical event that we did upstairs in the Melbourne Whiskey Room. McHenry on the mainland. It was the first McHenry mainland tasting that I've ever seen done and that I think was ever done. And now we're following that up a whole year later in the virtual world with a bunch of weird and wonderful one-off single casks, all straight from the barrel, except for the most current release. Not only that, but we are joined by Mr. Samuel Lucardi, the McHenry ambassador, who also happens to be his birthday today and his last tasting as the McHenry ambassador. So Sam, thank you so much for bringing this opportunity to us. It's a Thanks for having me again. It's an absolute pleasure. And yeah, it's nearly a year ago to the day. So it's nice and sentimental and wholesome. And I'm really excited for tonight to showcase this really cool lineup and showcase what casks that are weird and wacky we've got down there. And to, yeah, sort of sign off the year uh, in virtual sense so it's going to be a great last event and yeah we've got lots of christmas spirit so any questions fire away and yeah really keen for this one took the words right out of my mouth any questions just fire away pop them in the comment section down below uh get yourself some water if you haven't already because as i said before all of these but one are straight from the cast so we've got a whopping lineup tonight and yeah feel free to crack into your dalesford cider at any point you wish i've already got into mine <laughs> have, you, have you started on yours <laughs> there we go Perfect. Perfect. Uh, I could do the chat on that, but I'll let you. Tell us about the cider first, Sam. Yes. So Whiskey Man Sam is now becoming uh, Cider Man Sam. So that's sort of the gig I'm transitioning into at the moment. So Dalesford Cider, we're a heritage cidery. So what we're doing here is we've got sweet cop and apples. And the reason we actually chose this one is because it's going to hold up to that higher ABV. So we could have gone for a dry style, but they're quite high in booze themselves. So we didn't sort of want to wash it out. So we've gone for the sweet, something really easy to drink, something a bit fun, nice and summery. And yeah, proper paddock to bottle cidery. Everything that we grow, we make on site in the cidery. And it's been cool to sort of work in production over the last few weeks. So I think Claire and Mackie should be on later. So we'll say hello to them. And yeah, that's probably enough cider talk. We're all here to drink whiskey tonight. So that's good. And our other special guest has arrived now. So it's exciting. Please introduce. Yeah, so uh, Elise Cleary, the distillery extraordinaire. I'm Hi. gonna you introduce yourself and hope, you, hope you're well. Of course, yeah, I'm doing well. How are you, birthday boy, Sam? I am good, I'm good. Um, I'm Elise Cleary. I'm one of the distillers and long-term employees of the Canary Distillery. Um, I've been there for about six years now and I'm also a neuroscientist on the side. Um, and yeah, it's a pretty good gig. I absolutely love it there. And I love um, what I'm, the whiskey, which I'm really passionate about. And I'm excited to be tasting some with you tonight. And these are ones that Sam, um, Bill and I have handpicked. And yeah, really happy that you'll be enjoying these uh, with us. Yeah, well said. And yeah, these, these I can't take any credit for picking these. This is all Elise. So oh, I basically yeah. sent her the message and said, can you pick us some weird and wacky casks? <laughs> and parent B2 went into the bond stores. All few of I think we've got three of them now down there. And yeah, we've picked out some pretty cool casks to show, showcase for tonight. Yeah, so hand pipetted um, all of these myself. So <laughs> it was quite an effort actually, but it was really good fun. Can I, can I, I'm like the uh, interpreter uh, next to the Premier when he makes announcements. B2. So we've got two bills out of the distillery, B1, and we've got another bill there. So he gets the nickname B2. So that's who Elise was referring to, B2. Oh, yeah. So sorry. Yes, the B1, B, B1, B2. We've got two years to say. We talk about all the time. So it just comes out without us thinking. I even let that go. I was like, B1 and B2, I know who they are. Yeah. <laughs> I've been here for too long, Bill. I've been here for too long. <laughs> So actually, just 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 on that, we actually recruited. I think Elise was our oldest, uh, oldest recruit, and and still our youngest. I think she started working for us when she was fifteen. You're kidding? No. Yeah, <laughs> I was very underage. I was fifteen when I started working okay. um, at the distillery. Don't know how That's how they right. let that by, but <laughs> you're, you're yeah. one of the rarest rarest people on earth at twenty five getting long service leave. Yeah. <laughs> And 10 years of industry under your belt already. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. What a lineup of people and a lineup yeah. of whiskeys we've got here tonight. So a personal thank you from Whiskey and Almond for all of you guys for being able to join us tonight. Uh, to guest presenters and uh, special guests alike. 
I reckon we don't faff around any longer and dive into the worst first whiskey. Sorry, what do you think, Sam? Absolutely. I think, yeah, that's enough of us rambling. Let's get to the reason why we're here to drink some whiskey and share some stories. So, sure. I think we're going to, yeah, we're going to start, we're not going to start with number one tonight. We're actually going to start with number five. So, we're going to start with our, our core release and then go from one through to four. So, we're going to start with the lowest ABV and then get into the cast drink stuff from there. So, grab number five, have a bit of a smell. And yeah, feel free to ride any taste. It, it actually feels quite weird presenting because I've been to, I missed the first one of these. So, for a long time, I used to sit here and sort of drink the whiskeys, but now I'm on the other side. So, Please write any comments, ask any questions. We're happy to answer anything. And yes, please enjoy. And cheers. Cheers, Sam. And yeah, thank you so much for, for your patronage as well. It's, it's been awesome to have you here through all the virtuals. Oh, wouldn't it? It's been great. Like, I think I have had pushed dinner back a couple of times. So I probably have to apologize to mum and dad for that. But it's been really good to sort of keep that community sense going and share whiskeys with people every week. So straight off the bat, what have we got here? 100 litre American oak export, five years and nine months, 49.8% uh, ABV. So yeah, classic McHenry maturation style where we're doing the bourbon cask and then finishing in port. The difference with this one is it's a little bit higher than our usual, which is, sits around 44%. So this one's at that 49.8. That's really cool to sort of see like a McHenry core release up at that extra booze and sort of to compare them and see how that little bit of extra booze at our core range sort of suits that. And I really like this one. I think it doesn't taste overly boozy. It's still... To quote John, it's a breakfast whiskey. And that's, we're gonna probably say that a lot tonight, but John is the biggest advocate of breakfast whiskeys that I know. So yes, this is definitely fits into that category. Super sweet, that butterscotch, honey, toasted caramel and almonds thing that McHenry is always sort of, we've had going on. So yeah, classic example and a really cool little, I love it, the fact that it's at 49.8%, something different. I personally get a different mouthfeel with this one as well. Do you get that one too, Sam? Yeah, I do. It's got a bit more, yeah, a bit more viscosity to it. So it's quite enjoyable. I mean, I haven't it yet. So yeah, it's going to be really cool to sort of go on this trip down to Port Arthur with us tonight. Mm. How does it? Oh yeah, please. Oh, just trivia. Um, we we typically will, if we're doing bottle strength whiskey, it'll usually be between forty four and forty six. There's sort of that's sort of we found it's a bit of the sweet spot. This one was actually a bit of a um, how do I put it? It was a, a celebrity um well not celebrity but it was a special release done for a distillers club there's a club of whiskey collectors ah. and so we invited them down to the distillery and we said look this is the barrel that's actually ready to go next would you like to basically uh, curate this particular release for us and so they we gave them about five different uh, dilutions and they settled on 49.8 Perfect. So that was that was done essentially for us for a, a distiller's collection. That was my question too. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So it is a bit of anomaly from from the normal bottle strengths we do. Yeah, I, I quite like it. It's got a nice backstory to it. Something a little bit different because our last so barrel twenty one is very different from barrel twenty. So barrel twenty was a full port maturation. So the first time we'd done that, that was a bit more hot and spicy, a little bit younger. But this one's back to that core, sort of core flavour really quite mellow, super smooth. I hate the word smooth, but it does really fit this. And I think smooth can actually sometimes be a good descriptive word, but it's got a lovely mouthfeel, super palatable. And I think it's a good one to start off on tonight. Cause if we left that till last, probably would've got a bit, sort of our palates would've been a bit fatigued by then, but this one, it's a good one to start with for our, br our breakfast in the evening. So enjoy it. Yeah, feel free to send your thoughts in the comments as well. So we'd love to hear all that. I remember when I had breakfast. Yeah, I was just about to say, I remember when I first tasted McHenry New Make and it just tasted like Wonder White, white bread. And this, to me, is like I'm getting the same kind of like bready, toasty notes, but it's it's transformed and it's morphed and it's got brioche and it's got butter, but it's still wonderful and toasty. And I don't know how you're nailing that toasty thing, but... Still the best uh, tasting that I've ever heard. Uh, yeah, well, the tip-top Wonder White bread. And it's it's so good to go back to the New Make and smell mm. that. It is spot on. Especially like right when it's coming out of the still, it's incredible. It's so yeasty. It's yeah, it's wonder white. It's it's a great descriptor. It's funny though, you know, you go back to traditions of, of, of whiskey, and when when it was originally whiskey was originally being distilled, they would drink it straight from the still. Yeah. Uh, and so we will have tourists come up and we'll allow them to drink straight from the still, and they go, "You don't need to put this in a barrel. You know, you can have this just enjoy it just me." It's true. And it's what the, you know, the Scots would do. They would just take spirit off the still, go up into the mountains and the caves and... Chuck some herbs in it. You yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, are we allowed to send out New Make Bill? Because that would be really fun tasting. Look, yeah, we, we, we've avoided that, to be honest. Getting some, getting some nons there? Yeah. Out, we can't make whiskey out of them. So <laughs> it's always mm -hmm. um, And We had a bottle last year for the first event, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, a good starting point, especially for the... Sorry, you go, Miranda. Oh, I was just going to say, we were very lucky last year to taste that new make. And also, that we had a bottle of the low wines to pass around, bright mm. blue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but all the copper sulfate. Yeah, that's still, that's really cool, that bottle. So, oh, the show. blue? Yeah. These yeah. amazing bottles out of them. They're gorgeous, aren't they? And I think that's something you don't really see a lot, is the actual production. Like, how much copper sulfate does come out of your low wine. So, I think that was a really cool little visual prop to show just... Because a lot of time, all you drink is new make, but you're never thinking about the low wine. So I really like that little little experiment there. Mm. It's so funny, though, because it makes us cringe. Yeah. <laughs> every, every, every blue you see in there means we're dissolving our still. So oh. that's all coming straight out of the copper in the still. It's like when so. you go to the to the rickhouse, in the, sorry, the bottle stores in Scotland, and you go, it smells so good in here. And they're like, that's my whiskey in the air that you're smelling. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. New make is interesting. I have quite a collection of that Tasmanian new, build, new make building. Ah, have you got any? Have you got any McHenry new make in there? Can you confirm the one wide tip top? <laughs> I don't reckon he has. <laughs> I don't. I don't reckon he's got that one. <laughs> white whale. He does it. There you go. That's a, that's your white whale. White bread. White whale. <laughs> I like it. It's his porridge in a dram, says John. I'd have to agree. It is mm. really a breakfast whiskey. Mm, such a great descriptor, porridge in a dram. It yeah. is. That's a, that's see I don't sometimes I don't even actually need to write tasting notes because I just like do a tasting and John's there and he's got it straight <laughs> away. It's awesome. It's that great it's that vision, it's that feedback straight away. I love it. John's a big fan, so shout out to you. Mm, so good. So yeah, it's really cool. So if we want to move on to sort of more of the car strength stuff, because that's gonna be even more different. This is classic, super easy to drink, but once we get into those higher ABVs. And feel free to water them down as well because they are quite, they're quite up there. So add a couple of drops of water. And I think something that I've said for a long time, drink whiskey how you like. So you've got to, you, you're the one who bought this, enjoy it. And that's, that's sort of my philosophy towards whiskey. So let's get stuck to uh, number one. Just heating your warning there and I grabbed myself a little jug of water. Yes, go. yeah, I've got my, my little one. Especially given this one's a little bit hotter at 60, what is it, 60.7? 60 60.7, yeah. So we've got a, a big old 200 litre French oak export cask. So oh, immediately the nose of this is lovely. It's like, oh, no, you go, sorry. Oh, I just muttered to myself that it smells like Jersey caramels. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. super, it's super caramelly. Almost like milk duds as well. As a lot of yeah, what are those ones you'd have as a kid? Like every grandma had them. Yes. Um, uh, those are Jersey caramels or Werther's, Werther's original. What, yeah, Werther's. That's what I get on the nose. But whenever I say that, Bill gets mad at me for not using fancy. Which one? Bill one or Bill two? Bill two. He's like, no, it's not Jersey caramel. It's insane. I think what's surprising about this one is for 60% plus whiskey, you're not getting all that ethanol kick on the nose. It's really quite lovely. Totally yeah. And even on the palate, that's really cool. Mm. And I do like that we're contrasting tonight between McHenry spirit in French oak and McHenry spirit in American oak. And we've got export and bourbon casks. So we are really going to show sort of the eclectic range that we've got and the different variances in casks as well. So I'm really excited to sort of get through the ones later on and then come back to them. So save a little bit in your glass and then we'll come back to it. This is so wonderful and chewy and thick on the palate as well, isn't it? The mouthfeel is so interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's so much more viscous. I feel like a lot of us here are already very well acquainted with McHenry as well. But while we're here on our first dram, for those of you that don't know McHenry, Sam, why don't you give us a, the intro to McHenry? Yes. So uh, we are Tasmania's and Australia's southernmost whiskey producing distillery. So located down in Port Arthur, Tasmania. Probably one of the most stunning distilleries I've been to, not only in Australia, but the world. We look out, right, we've got stunning views from the, the property's massive. So We've got the cellar door down the bottom, the distillery halfway up the mountain, all our bond stores and vaults and all other goodies and accommodation now down the bottom. And up the top, we've got accommodation and we've got our gin lab and stunning views. I think it goes right down to Hobart on a good day when it's nice and clear as well. Oh, for sure. Easily. And 
it's lovely because at night it's it sounds so cliche but the stars are stunning down there like you look up at the sky and it's just beautiful so it's a very lovely place in the world Bill was just uh, telling me that you guys have some new accommodation there as well. What were you going to say? Yeah, no, we, we've got um, we've got two old cabins, the Bothy, and you'll if you have a look at our website, I think we featured one of the Bothies on our website. Two brand we new eco have... eco uh, cabins we put in there, which we're just finalising. And on on this is this is this is not um, staged at all, but on the back of what Sam said about the uh, the night sky, we've actually putting in a uh, ten thousand uh, dollar telescope over the next couple of months oh. and so that will actually be housed in an old wheat silo which oh, we're wow. going to build up the top of the mountain and so people can come and and really experience a dark sky um the problem we have in australia the big cities is with, mm, so there's really no light pollution yeah. Yeah. there we are there's a coffee there we go i'll share that screen yep uh sam spent a couple of nights up in there it, it's cold in winter, but it's pretty lovely. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit chilly. It's a bit of a breeze up there, yeah. It's stunning to wake up to that view in the morning and just think, yeah, this is pretty awesome. So in the winter, we get a bit of snow. We we'll light the fire, though, a couple of drams. It's it's absolutely perfect. But, yeah, we're putting a telescope in there. So uh, come February, you'll be able to basically do aurora spotting and, and, and uh, stargazing. Oh, wow. That'd be good because then you can drink our Southern Cross Series whiskeys as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug and marketing. And we can, you can drink our, our Alpha and our, our Beta, and they're all the, the stars of the Southern Cross to be nice and patron yeah. as well. So, the eco cabins up that way are gorgeous as well. So, that there is the Bothy, which is um, the old accommodation that Bill used to stay in when he was um, establishing the distillery. But now we have slightly more modern, um, these beautiful eco cabins on the same uh, plane as that one there. And the views from there are just stunning. So it's a similar kind of landscape all the way to Hobart. It's just, it's beautiful. If you're ever down that way, you should definitely check that one out. But yeah, what's everyone's thoughts on the whiskey as well? Cause I think it's really, it's really interesting this one. I'm loving, as, as Dom has echoed in the comments there, the mouth feel on this one, the viscosity as Elise said, and that that original Jersey caramel and the mm. worthers we're getting on the mm. nose, totally translated to the finish as a really well-rounded whiskey for for six years and five months, you wouldn't pick it. So I'm just looking at the, the, the strength, okay? Mm -hmm. So we fill all our barrels at 63.5 on the nose. So in, you know, what's that, six years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, six five. years and a half, six and a half year old whiskey, that's lost uh, just short of 3% alcohol. And this, this what, what Sam says about our position in being southernmost, does actually come through in, in the spirit through its aging because the cool temperate environment with a high humidity means our, we tend to lose, uh, we tend to lose uh, alcohol, but not a lot of it. Whereas you'll find, and so our alcohol levels drop. Whereas a lot of distilleries you'll find, e even in Hobart will lose water. So their alcohol levels rise. So this does create this sort of, this sort of differentiation between, you know, distilleries, even in Tasmania, There's but certainly two. between Tasmania and mainland. There's literally only two distilleries in Tasmania that have the ABV go down over time, and that's McHenry and Furno. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's quite quite uh, common in the deep, dark dunnages of Scotland, but yeah. you just don't see it in Australia. So it's really unique whiskey, really unique climate. Mm. Totally unreal. <laughs> it's really cool to see the sort of comparison between Furno and us because it's at the opposite ends of Tasmania. One's up basically in the middle of the Bass Strait and we're down south, but it's cool because they're a lot warmer than we are, but we still have that same climactic experience. So. It's the joys of the Australian whiskey like landscape, because like especially when you talk to guys in Melbourne, and especially if you talk to guys in South Australia and New South Wales, they're in a position where they're losing so much spirit every year. So we're quite fortunate that we can sort of let our barrels go a lot longer. Um, Bill, I know you've had this idea in the pipeworks for a while, and I hope you don't mind me sharing this today. But you've had this in the pipework um, where you wanted to pop a barrel on. Was it? Is it King Island? You were thinking of? Oh no, the Tasman Island. On the Tasman Island. Oh. Let them ramble about this. It's so interesting. Um, so around Tassie, there are these series of islands. And yeah, for as long as I've been working here, Bill's talked about putting some barrels on there and then just letting them go and see what they do. And it's it'd be so interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, so it's helicopter in, helicopter out. It's the only way you can get there. And the, the thing about the Tasman Island, it, it's, it's, it's essentially deep in the Southern Ocean. So surrounded by those roaring 40s, we're at 43 degrees south. And so the idea would be, what would be 
the uh, the impact of all those the, those maritime air, that maritime breeze that we're getting through the island, over the island, and you know through our whiskey. So, you know, I haven't been. It's national park, so I've still got to crack the national park. You know, <laughs> park ranges on the good side. Yeah, yeah. But look, we'll probably. Well, I, I'm pretty sure we'll get it because some of the things we do are sort of community based. So we may just say, look, we'll store whiskey on the island, and you know the profits can go to national park. You know, for for cleaning the beaches, you know, trying to reduce, you know, pollution and so forth. Because we have this beautiful maritime coast and it's it's tragic to see what's happening to it, you know, with fishing ropes and bottles and Masks, refuse and all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, yeah, at least you and I will have to work on that one, won't we? <laughs> I've got enough projects on the go. Well, I'm sure we can manage. <laughs> And you heard it here first, guys. There you go. Yeah, a little sneak peek of what's to come with McHenry's. And I, yeah, I'd be very excited to have that one in the pipeworks because, yeah, how cool would it be? It's, it'd be a really interesting little project. So we've got John saying awesome mouthfeel on this one. The palette is definitely gingerbread and man shortbread too. Uh, Whiskey in Isolation says earthy taste up front and then a black forest gateau, dark note. I love that. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Henry is saying, uh, McHenry is on my Tassie itinerary. I'll see you there. And Michael is saying, definitely still getting the words original. I'd have to echo yeah. all those. So actually for all of the, uh, the virtuals, what do you call people on virtual tasting now? Virtuals? Yep. <laughs> so all your virtuals, look, if you do come to Tasmanian, Tasmania, please make an effort to come to our distillery and ask for me. And we'd love to show you around. B1. B1. <laughs> If B2's there, you'll get a good... Oh, he'll, he'll do it. He'll just... He'll be really be... interesting to her. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's, that's part of the thing we like to do is it's, look, um, it's a little bit like, uh, you know, that, that, that proud grandparent, you know, you want to show your, your children, <laughs> that yeah. people you find your children. That's sort of like it for us too. We're pretty proud of where we are. Oh, yeah. And Bill loves it as well. He gets to get out of doing work for about an hour while he shows guests around. He loves it. It's great. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Dominic, Dominic Arcaro is saying, can't wait to get there. Whiskey and Isolation says, I'll be there on the second week of April, B1. And okay. Henry says, thanks, B1. Yeah. You got you got crowds coming to you. Right. <laughs> We've got the dogs as well. I hope, I hope no one minds, but there are the dogs running around the whiskey, oh, the distillery. Yeah. Distillery dogs? Yeah, but. Distillery dogs. Labrador. Oh. John Retriever. I mean, you know, how distillery can that, how Scottish can that be? That's, yeah. <laughs> That's a, what are their names? Uh, Daisy and Sam. Daisy and Sam. Yeah. Any correlation, Sam? <laughs> well, no, Sam is a bit blonder than I am, so. <laughs> he's a little bit blonder. He's a little bit blonder than I am. You know, very <laughs> cute still. Well. He's, he's not a smart dog at all. <laughs> cute, though. Yeah, so sweet. I just popped a little bit of water in my in my glass number one. Has anybody else done that? Mm. Not quite yet. It's bringing out those earthy tones that I think it was uh, Dom that was speaking about. Oh, sorry, it was in isolation. In isolation, bringing out those real beautiful earthy tones. Yeah, I find that one there with a bit of water, nowhere near as sweet and as caramel and more that like earthy, not like yeah, like that earthy foresty. Mm. But Dom, you're right. It definitely didn't need water. I was just curious. I was enjoying number one as it was as well. Yeah, I haven't had any water to this one. I think too too worried it'll uh, spoil the <laughs> make the nice. Well, there's 30 mils there, guys. I hope you're not going to be drinking all of your 30 mils all at once. <laughs> We're not meant to? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> too late. <laughs> oh, there's nothing wrong with doing that, so. No, I've got nothing on tomorrow. It's fine. Exactly. Oh, this is the last virtual of the year. We may as well. <laughs> uh, don't forget Salamanca on Saturday, uh, Elise. I do. <laughs> Stop reminding me. Oh, what a way. I'll be there with you, okay? Yeah. There you go. Karen and Ian, I want to visit the distillery dogs and I want to visit for the distillery dogs and the whiskey. Mm. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely both a factor. Both a factor. One, of, um, one of our COVID projects, and again, Bill, I hope you don't mind me showing this, but I think it's public, um, is the, oh, look at him. No, um, the, the brewery that we established over the, um, over the year. Mm. So um, 
COVID has been really tricky with all distilleries and all local and small businesses, but it's given us this really unique chance to kind of catch up and slow down um, our production. And with that, we've, um, well, do you want to take it from here, Bill, with the brewery? No, you're doing a great job. <laughs> no, thank you. It's my job. <laughs> um, we made a brewery this year. So we've got a brewery up and running and we're getting through a fair bit of, fair bit of peat. So um, yeah, hold your horses. But in about 10 years time, we'll have some really beautiful Tasmanian peated whiskey coming out. And yeah, if, again, if you're down, um, I'm sure B1 wouldn't be, wouldn't be too mad about taking some people around the, um, the brewery and the distillery. So. But the, the, uh, the brewery at the moment has a uh, half million litre wash capacity. Ooh, so, massive. Yeah, so that, that you know, puts us you know, up towards 50,000 litres of spirit a year. That's amazing. We've also got some gypsy brewers coming in to, to actually make some distillery beer. So we'll have you know, just some really special release beer available only at the distillery. So on tap. What, what brewers, may I ask? Oh, well, it's a couple of guys that live on the Tasman and they're a couple of mad scientists. I love that. And so they've already got one stout, which they call Dark Matter. And so, oh, um, <laughs> that rings a bell. Has anybody had the Dark Matter? Anybody know of these guys? I'm gonna switch it to Gallagher think, you. Jason would be our resident beer expert here, I think. <laughs> oh yeah, Jason Odering, where is he? Yes, he's my go-to for beer advice. Yeah, he's great. Anyway, sorry, that was a sidebar. So yeah, so um, so the, the brewery currently has capacity for half a million, but we, we have expansion for it to do a million litres of wash. So it, it, it sounds like a lot, but in the realms of Scottish distilleries, we're still minuscule. Well, they're spilling you know. what we're making. Yeah, yeah I love that phrase. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, potentially 100,000 litres of spirit a year, you wow. know, 20,000 barrels, something like that. No, no, that's 200 into 100,000. <laughs> Come on, you can do it, Bill. You can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that a week, that no, just one. Week. <laughs> it's all right. To be honest, we don't count. We just like making. You know, that's sort of central to what we do. Yeah. We just enjoy the process of making and then sharing. You know, that's really having it all done under one roof again was so special for us. So having the process of you know making the wash and having the water and barreling. Yeah, it's all been really important. Um, I think we've got a question, maybe? Please. Yes, where's our peat come from? It's, it's Baird's malt, so it's heavily peated Scottish malt. Yeah. So Port Gordon is the, uh, the, the peat work, the, the, the malting works. We're taking the barley off at the moment. So it is Scottish peat. Um, and we do have plans. We're sort of trying to find a, a nice uh, Tasmanian peat bog to start harvesting our own local peat. Very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. So the ethos has always been trying to use um, locally sourced um, uh, product, you know, uh, ingredients. So the barley for our unpeated has always been Tasmanian barley. Um, however, we, we couldn't really source a good Australian peated malt. So we've had to go overseas and we visited the, uh, the malt house uh, in February just before COVID. Um, closed everything down and we had a good chat with them and we like what they were doing so That's we're something. now using theirs yeah that's really exciting and like on source uh, making efforts to source your own tasmanian peat in the yeah. backyard is there any locations that you're looking at any yeah ideas look, you might have? yeah so um we collaborate with actually a little little zoo down the road it's, it's called an unzoo because it's sort of an unconventional zoo and they they basically um have Tasmanian devils, Australian native, Australian, you know, for, fauna, and they've got a refuge in the highlands and they've got peat bogs there. So we're looking to basically utilize some of their peat in exchange, maybe for support. Um, we have a real problem with roadkill of, of devils in Tasmania. So um, there's these uh, road markers you can, you can install now, which basically switch on at night when headlights go past and make a noise to scare away the devils. Cool. So we're trying to fund a lot of road markers along the road in our area That's to try and keep, you know, the, <laughs> the devils as safe as we can. So there might be a nice collaboration there. That's breaking once yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> Actually on the note of Tasmanian devils, Bill, I'm spilling all the distillery gossip here tonight. Sorry guys. Um, but the Tassie devils that we've got on the property, have we, is there any more news about those? There's four of them. 
this pool. Four robust, healthy Tassie devils that live on the property. So we know that because this particular zoo has put in night cameras and uh, we've been able to identify them. So we've got uh, two, uh, one old male, uh, two young uh, bucks and a, and, a, and a young girl. Oh, wow. So we're really trying to you know, look after those precious animals. And one of the cottages, we call the devil's lair because they actually feed in front of them. Oh. So if you're lucky, um, uh, you can come up there and stay the night. And, you know, if you're lucky, you might see them outside your window. They sound terrifying, though. They just, they, the screams that these animals make are insane. <laughs> but it's part of the experience. And, yeah, again, if you're down, I highly recommend staying um, just to suss that out as well. Because, yeah, you, if you're lucky, you might have a, you might hear them feeding or see them running around. Because, yeah, they are all over the shop. That is awesome. Mm. I must say, though, I think it might be time for whiskey number two. We're sold almost 40 minutes into the tasting now. What do you reckon, guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see what John said about the boiler making pairings. Yeah. That'd be great. So John's just sent a PM there. John, the boiler maker king, says, uh, please mention to Bill that I would be keen to assist with any boiler maker pairings at his brewery, distillery products, just saying. And there you go. So, Miranda, do, do you do guest cakes? Uh, we don't, unfortunately. Right. Both our cakes are contracted. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that's something that the, the viewers can actually, you know, get you to sort of agitate for yeah, guest cakes. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, I mean, the, the fridges are ever rotating. And Lockie, he, Lockie, the bar manager here, he loves nothing more than finding new and innovative beers from local breweries to, to come in and pair with our whiskey. So if anybody ever has any suggestions of things that they'd like to see, let us know. That is a that is a whole can of worms, Henry. Are you making gin as well? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we make gin. Getting started. <laughs> we make a lot of different kinds of gin. I think about eleven all up. Yeah. No, like, whole range of gins, so many. So probably on the mainland, we're probably more known for gin, especially our slow gin, which came. We like to say it came second in the world. Mm. So we did. We were Australia's award Australia's best slow gin in the world gin awards, and we've got beaten out by Hayman's. And if you, if you get beaten out by Hayman's, that's not a bad little effort because they're sort of the kings of slow gin in the world. So, yes, we do make lots of gin, everything from barrel age to vintage, uh, to classic dry, our Federation gin, which is the Australian Parliament's gin up in Canberra. So we've got, we've got lots. So definitely, yes, we do make gin. There was a quick question just to scroll back, Miranda. I noticed yeah. the devils are all clean. So on the Tasman Peninsula where we're located, it's actually been um, developed as a reserve for the Tassie devils. And so they, they basically went out and trapped all the diseased animals and reintroduced new ones or fresh, clean, you know, healthy ones. And they're monitoring that population, you know, fairly carefully. So it's a bit of an arc for Tassie devils. So we're super lucky to have them on the property. And yes, they're all healthy. There you go. I'm glad you caught that one. I didn't quite, sorry, Doug. There you go, sorry. Doug. Uh, Whiskey Nash Lesson says, I'm getting my wife to McHenry's. Oh, two ways I'm getting my wife to McHenry's in April is gin and art. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I don't know whether, because I'm conscious of time, but we, we actually got into gin. And and who, who was it put that question about the gin and, and um, whiskey in isolation? Yes. Okay. So um, we actually started making gin because we do understand that whiskey can be polarizing. You know, you, you, you get people that are really you know, welded on whiskey lovers and you get people that just can't stand it. You know, they tried it, didn't like it. Um, and so we started doing gin specifically to create an alternative for people that maybe didn't want to try out whiskey. And so as, as Sam said, we've got a huge range now. We have seasonal gins, we have award-winning gins, we do, you know, barrel aged, one of my favourites. Yeah, yeah. actually do a, a gin that's been aged in a whiskey barrel. I love that one. Yeah. Mm. So really. That being, that being said, though, should we move on to <laughs> the other gin? Yeah, welcome to gin and element. Oh. <laughs> but yes, definitely. This second one is complete contrast to the first one. We're going from French oak export into American oak ex bourbon. Still two hundred liters. And I don't know the exact barrel, but it's probably one of our Heaven Hills. And I think actually this is the nice little tie-in to last year that we actually tasted this at our event last year. So it's really cool to sort of see that a progression between two tastings, you don't normally get to taste the same barrel a year later at an event. So 
yeah, really like this one. And it's really progressed quite well because last year was almost had this like saline quality to it. And this year it's all sort of petered out a little bit. It still has that wonderful, because I remember being such a big fan of this cast when he brought in first samples and it had this wonderful milk bottle lolly character. That yeah. Like creamy, like I don't know how to describe it other than milk bottle lollies and creamy and wonderful. And it still has that on the nose, but I feel like it's, now I'm getting marshmallow, coconut. It sounds like just more, like more of the American oak influence, obviously, but it's not just like vanilla in staves and it's not just like wood spice at all. It's actually all come together really nicely. One of my favorites, thank you. Absolutely, yeah, I, I think that's a spot on summary. And it's really interesting because this one sits at 62.4. So in six and a half years, it's only lost 0.6 of a percent. And that's sort of the beauty that we don't know what's going to happen with these barrels. Some, as we get into the third one, that's lost 6%, but this one's only lost 06 So it's the joys of whiskey making. And I think that's why I love it so much because it's the magic of it all. Yeah, look, it, it's yeah, a, not going to happen. We, barrels are so individual. You know, we, we'll, we'll, we'll bring people into the distillery and I'll say it's a bit like, you know, having your children. They might come from the same parents, you know, the same family, same food, same love, you know, everything's the same, but you know, all of a sudden they yield different. Just you know, like flavors. me and my brother. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, that's the, the lovely thing, but also it does make it a bit hard if you're trying to make a style and keep it consistent. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, a lot of Australian whiskies are all single barrel. I think the next stage for Australian distilleries is the blending. Absolutely. And to keep the consistency. So, um, you know, it's lovely to celebrate differences, but I think ultimately, when you know the, the the public are really sort of you know the bulk of the public are really locked on the Australian whiskies, we've got to deliver uh, you know consistency in our product. Absolutely. So, but on the same breath, I think consistency in distilling is it's, you know a piece of string. It's an impossible thing to achieve, especially with things like whiskey that is so variable as time goes on. But I think it's one of the, as Sam was saying before, one of the really exciting things about distilling is that you never really know what's going to happen until you crack open a cask and until you give it a taste. And with that, every barrel is unique. It has its own story and journey. Mm. Yeah, well said. Yeah, I, I think that's the beauty of like going into a bond store and cracking open casks. And I do hope that Australian whiskey does move into blends. I think that is the future we sort of do need to go. So it's going to be, I think we're in a really, I remember talking about this with Matt Bailey. We're sort of in the next phase of Australian whiskey now. We've gone through the, the early days. We've gone through the Sullivan's Cove winning the award. And now we're into the stage where we don't know what's going to happen. Are we going to be a niche market or are we going to sort of take on the rest of the world? So I'm excited to see what happens over the next sort of 10 to 15 years. Mm. On that note, how's everyone feel about uh, MD10, so cast 25? So Simon mm. and Alyssa are saying pineapple gummy lollies on the nose. Rob and Adam haven't quite... Uh, take into this one, like the first glass, which is totally fine. Henry is saying some tropical fruit, passion fruit on the nose of the number two. I totally agree with all of the above. Big tropical fruit bomb this one as well. Mm. The pineapple lollies was a great call. Almost done like a summery, yeah, summer fruit. Mm. Pina colada vibes. Pina colada whiskey, yeah, there we go. Open up the, the vanilla. Oh, pina yeah. colada whiskey. I reckon this one might do really well with just a dash of water too, and maybe a little bit of thyme. Mm. I mean, but you're just seeing all those beautiful oils like come right up from the glass as soon as you drop that in there. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So very reactive cask, obviously. Got a good comment here. It says blender is not bad. Absolutely. There are some amazing blends out there. So I think that's something I always tried to sort of promote is in like as not just the McHenry whiskey ambassador, but as an ambassador for all whiskey, blends are great. Single malts are great. And we should drink all of them because it's good for the industry to drink everything. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pina colada, Sam. Uh, I would actually make cocktails with this. Like, it would make some pretty awesome, like, whiskey sours, getting those coconut, those vanilla vibes in there. So, yeah, it's a really unique palette and flavour on this one. Mm, and I think it's so controversial thinking about whiskeys as able to be a cocktail-y spirit. But, yeah, it's, I don't know. I think it's it could be fun. It could be interesting. I think so. Whiskey should be enjoyed however we like. And however, you, however you like it. Exactly. exactly. And it does go really well in cocktails. I've, I've tried it a bit. <laughs> It's great. Expensive cocktail, but great bougie little. cocktail, but bougie cocktail. Worth a cocktail. Absolutely. <laughs> so with a little bit of water, I'm actually getting some um, some spearmint lollies come out on this. All that confectionery is still there. It's still totally got that gummy sweetness, but now there's this wonderful spearmint note that's just riding the top. 
Do you find it's a different sweetness to the first and second one we had where it was like more of a Jersey caramel vibe? Whereas this one is sweeter, but in like a... Like a fruit. Like, yeah, like a fruit or like Alan's lolly scents. Yeah. You get that, but well, yeah, I don't know why that would be. Interesting though, isn't it? Totally different. Really American and French oak and the different sort of compounds you get from that. I love yeah. that getting distillers. Uh, sorry, Cooper's talking about French and, and uh, American oak. French oak, apparently the worst in the world. Hate working with it, flakes away. It's just terrible to try and bend. American oak, fantastic. <laughs> I'm excited to see an Australian is an ara cask just for marketing purposes. Oh, the <laughs> I want to see the Jarrowwood experiments come to fruition. Yeah, because I think I really, uh, there's only probably two distilleries sort of doing stuff like that. And it's going to be really interesting to see. And then we've got the red gum happening with uh, multiple distilleries. Like there was the Redlands red gum that's already released backwards has a rye red gum cask that is fantastic. Did not expect it to be that good. There's some really awesome cask experimentation coming out of, of, out of Tassie and mainland. I think, yeah, Apple would have yeah. their one that was native. So I think that could be the, another part of the next Australian whiskey phase is native woods. Hmm. Bill, we should write that one down. <laughs> well, you look, I think the next one I want to try and acquire is actually some Japanese oak. Yeah, there's an arrow. Yeah, so, um, you know, that's sort of the next challenge for me is to actually procure enough of that. It's leaky, apparently. Leaky. Yeah, very unreliable oak. <laughs> <laughs> and there is that, like, classic, uh, really refined sandalwood incense, like the bright uh, herbaceous notes that you're meant to get from... From Mizanara Oak, but I think it would be really interesting paired with the Australian spirit, especially like Australian barley too. Mm, mm. It's just asking John there, he's got the Applewood Jarrah, what's it like? It says heaps of dark cocoa, ex espresso coffee, and very woody. Interesting. Mm. Mm. Sounds interesting. We'll have to hit up Henry and get a sample from him. Yeah, which one's at the Applewood Jarrah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of different casks, that's what's, it's a good little segue into our third, whiskey, our fourth whiskey, which is a oh. total cask. Uh, just a quick hello to, I think it was David that just joined us. We are about to move on to whiskey number three. So yes, moving on to our, our third one, which is down to a hundred litre cask. So Toke or Tokaji, which is the old Hungarian name but then once the, the laws change so we're moving into dessert wine sticky sweet the things that i really love to drink so i always love like sticky wine finishes and things like that so this one's going to be really cool only five years and one month but and the biggest point for this one is it's dropped six percent in abv so it's going to be really interesting to see how this one sort of does hold up if we need to add any water or if we don't so have a bit of a taste yes so number three but the fourth whiskey Super interesting nose on this, completely different to the last one we've just tried. It's gonna have a bit of a wee taste. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty cool, pretty damn cool. Okay. It's funny because the only fill we do now is, is 200, 300 litres. So we don't do any more hundreds. We were, in the early days, we were matching a small cask, 100 litre with a 200 litre. And so we've now, essentially finished with the 100 litres. Mm -hmm. And so this is, we've got uh, 20 or so left, I think. Not a lot left. And that will be our releases for the next you know, 12 months, 18 months. And then we'll shift over to the large form, older style whiskey, uh, more traditional in nature. Yeah. Now, one thing we are doing at the Silly, which is totally unique, is we actually are taking new French oak out of, out of France and drying it at the distillery. So up near where the telescope's going and near where the, uh, the boffy is, we've actually got about, I think it's about a half a million dollars worth of French oak staves, all mm. just slowly drying there. That's amazing. Mm. So many spoilers tonight, Bill. That one's not for another couple of years. I went to, yeah. yeah. I had to get in before you, at least. I know. <laughs> but what I see John pouring something there. I reckon he's got another toko finish. <laughs> he does. He's got, he's, there we go. But yeah, really, I think Tokay casks really do suit Australian whiskey, especially because they are local, mainly from other Glen. So it's really cool to see that. Yeah. Yeah, it's those beautiful stickies out of Victoria. Mm. This one's one of my, this one and number four, I think, the last one. Yeah, the, oh, yeah, number four, my favourite. It's just so good. 
And Tokyo is really beautiful. And yeah, you're right, there's a lot for Australian whiskies. Barrels, mm. when they're cut, they're, I mean, the, the timber's, you know, chopped off full of moisture, so it has to be dried out. And and the bulk of, of, of most barrel timber is oven dried, so it's dried in a week, two weeks in a gas or a brick oven. But uh, the old way was to actually air dry it. So Maker's Mark are, are, are famous for their, uh, you know, uh, air dried um, wood. And what happens in that two, three years it takes to um, dry out the wood is you actually get little microbes growing on the timber. You get the microflora starting to break down the timber. And when that's incorporated into the barrel, that actually releases flavors nice. back into the barrel. So these are actually the really highly sought after barrels. And so um, this little experiment we've got going is a collaboration between our cooperage, not ours, but the cooperage in Tasmania, uh, Taz Cast Company, and the cooperage in France, where all the timber comes from. Which uh, cooperage in France is that if you don't mind? Oh, I can't remember, to be honest. It's all right. Minor detail. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I can't remember. I was going to say that. That's really special. And, and you know what? The wonderful thing about this is that a lot of the timber that is up at our distillery would have been plants, planted trees that are planted around the time of Napoleon in the yeah. 1820s, 1830s. So, you know, there's real history in this wood. You don't think about it, but these trees are sometimes 230, 220 years old. That's really it's, brilliant. You know, it, it connects you back to things that were happening. You only read about in history books. Yeah, mm. this is true. Yeah. One of, the, one of the best whiskies that I've ever tasted was the, that backwards red gum rye cast that I was talking about before. And the red gum rye that that barrel was made from used to be a fence. And it was fen fence posts that had been sitting out in the conditions for 60 years. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason that, that wood was so fantastic. And it mm -hmm. wasn't just smack with the red gum character. It was just beautifully refined. Like there is something to be said about the way that the staves are dried and, and how long they're out there as well. It's, it's something that's not spoken about enough, I think. Oh, for sure. And, and like, as you were saying this, you know, enormous amount of wood that we have really out in the open so it's exposed to the elements it gets the sea breeze it gets the salt um, it sees the sun it sees the rain the cold it'll be really interesting to see what comes with those barrels and yeah again more things in the line that we're very excited and very proud about as well so, great example of that terroir word which i love to whip out at every tasting but it is because it is incorporating all the elements of what is going down in port arthur mm. and there was a good question i think from doug where the winery was coming from probably morris that's probably the, yeah. I don't remember seeing a few Morris casts down there and that's probably the best bit of it where that did come from. Yep. Um, and Morris Tokay is lovely. It's, it's really quite cheap as well. And it's just, it's awesome. I think, yeah, Miranda knows I like, like sticky ports and I cracked into the para port today. So that was pretty awesome. Definitely. Well, there we go, Elisa. Don't worry, Whiskey and Ice, Whiskey and Isolation says that they're going to forget everything after 150 mils. <laughs> oh, good. You better. Oh. <laughs> no, it's <all> fine. <laughs> that being said, though, definitely come down to the distillery, the accommodation, the stars, the um, the telescope that Bill's going on. Yeah, it's, it's really it's a very special little place. Um, um, yeah, Sam. You, when was last? Yeah, you've you've been down several times, Sam. Oh, I went to in January last, so that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Yep. I was there when the gin awards were on so that was that's the last time i was able to get down sadly but mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty awesome it's always a special place to go down and visit and i think that's sort of the reason why i sort of i do what i do and sort of pursue my passion in the alcohol industry because it, the sales and everything's fun but it's actually being at the distillery amongst everything that's what sort of gives you that love and it's always yeah it's always going to hold a special place for me so yeah love distilleries and all that so yeah mm -hmm. Oh, for sure, for sure. And hey, now now that we can fly everywhere again, I hope they have you down sometime soon. Oh, February. Louis yeah. Duncan sent me a message the other day, so we're hitting up Gold Bar at least. Oh, beautiful. I'll see you then. Exactly. <laughs> I like this comment from our Simon Alyssa. Tewa is French, is French for marketing. Yes, but I actually do quite, I think it does play a little bit of a part. So, but definitely as, as from the marketing perspective, Tewa is a, it's a good term to sort of say. We're getting some great tasting notes here coming in from Simon and Lisa. We've got honey and wax for us, almost Manuka. Similar notes to the old Kempton to release, uh, Michael says. And I just want to echo the, the, the smack in the face of butter that uh, Michael here says. Oh, wait, no, sorry. I'm sorry, I can't find the comment. But on like the exhale and doing these ones, it is all burnt butter popcorn for me. Burnt mm -hmm. butter popcorn through and through. Like wonderful, beautiful, grainy backbone, all that buttery goodness, a lot of sweetness. So this might be my favourite so far. 
Oh, wait to the last one. Number four. It's my favorite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like your comment there, John. And you biased about Hobart whiskey? Never. I would never have picked that one. <laughs> I, um, I personally, it'd be interesting to see if you get um, Mirinda. The, um, you know, like cultured butter, how it's got like that weird, kind of like funky, like it's still butter, yes. but it's like that almost um, like fermented taste. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm. I love it. <laughs> Butter menthol is a really one. That's a really good one. Mmm, butter menthol. Has that nice residual spice. Mm. I'd love to say it's from the eucalypts surrounding the property, but that's that's just probably marketing. But in some <laughs> of the whiskies we did sort of, I sort of been lucky enough to try lots of different car samples. And some of them we do get this weird eucalypt note. It's really interesting to see. And that may be because we're surrounded by those lovely old eucalypts, or it just might be the byproduct of the casks. And I think we're lucky enough tonight to try some barrels that have actually been housed in our brand new bond store, which is the vault or the bunker. We've got lots of different names for it, but in that environment, they sort of developed this weird sort of wine yeast around the sort of, it's basically that wine mold around the bunghole. And it's really cool to see over the next say 10 years, is that going to sort of affect how our whiskey is? And I think a few, I think two of these, I think we sort of, I think we moved 10 and three into the, into the uh, new bond store. So, yeah, sort of two casts from a different yeah. area of the, the distillery. Mm. So seeing how there's different areas of the distillery, because that um the bond store, or not the bond store, the um oh, what are we calling it, Bill? The bunker? Well, the vault. The vault. It really is like this um like twenty meter inside a cave, dark, damp area. Um, but the smell out of there, and it's like this really condensed environment for whiskey. That's actually quite um like cold and wet too. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of there in a couple of years' time. It's going to be interesting to see how the different, basically we've got three bond stores now and if it's going to take on those different characteristics of like the old Scottish ones and like last night, how we were talking about like the difference between like Van Winkle and uh, W.L. Weller. Is it going to make a difference? Are we going to have like our, our McHenry Distillery Reserve from the bunker and then we've got our normal bond store? So it's an exciting time to see how those those barrels will mature. Mm. So Even them. Um... Oh, sorry, Bill, you go. I'm just trying to see if I've got a photo of the vault that I can't find one. But just for, for the folks um, that, that haven't seen it, the um, I think I've got one, Bill, if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened? Funny stories that we have. You know, you, you're working away in the distillery and all of a sudden this car comes up the driveway. The cellar door is very near the edge of the property, but the distillery is sort of, you know, it's another 500 metres further into the property. Um, and the, the cellar door and the distillery are still only, you know, a third of the way into the property. So it's still another, you know, couple of kilometres to the edge of the property. And we were, Bill and I, Bill too and I were standing there one day and this car came up the road. We thought, oh, someone's come to, like a commercial rep's come up to visit us or something like that. Because they'll come in and visit or someone's come to read the power board or... Anyway, but they kept driving. They drove past us and they just kept going up the mountain. And so the road access to the mountain ran between the, all the sheds in the distillery and we were thinking, what is this going on here? And five minutes later, whoever it was, you know, came down, they, they, they basically came back. They said, we said, you know, can we help you? And they go, oh, well, I was following the Google pin to try and find the distillery. And of course the Google pin is oh. set in the middle of the property. Yeah. So they drove past the cellar door, past the distillery, up to the top of the mountain. Oh, goodness. <laughs> found themselves in the middle of nowhere and turned around <laughs> and came back. So what we've done now is actually we changed the road. So you can't drive through the middle of the distillery. And so where the road was, we've actually made the vault. So we've dug into the mountain and we've created this big bunker. That's cool. To then sort of slowly age. And what, what we do there is we do VIP tasting. So you can come into the vault surrounded by all of our best whiskey and then just sit down there and just, you know, enjoy you know, the selection of, of, of brands we've got there. That's um, very unique as well. Yeah, very yeah, unique. yeah. I've so got you a question here for you. Mm. So Henry is just wondering, any plans for using Tanny Wine Casks B1 or, or have you already? I'm a VIP soon. Yeah, so we have. Uh, we, we've done Pinot. So, so far we've got a, a bit of our whiskey in Pinot and that comes out of, Tassie's famous for its Pinot. So we've selected that one. Again, because it's terroir, it's about the place. Um, and so, yeah, we've got, yeah, we've got uh, Tewa, uh, 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 Pinot cast at the moment, so. Uh, Elise, did you get that photo? 
Um, I did. I did find it. I just airdropped it to myself. So let me try to share the screen. Um, this is just a photo I took for Sam. It's not that. It's not like a proper photo, like distillery photo. Oh, I love um, but you get a bit of an idea of how small the space is. That it is this like really small, like I want to say five meters oh, into, yeah. um, like into the cave almost. Um, and it's just packed with barrels now. Have you got yeah, it's so Are wet. At least from the front of the cave. Um, I tried. That's what I tried to find. I don't think I have any. I'm sorry, Bill. Okay. I'm too busy working all day. So. Yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for that. Of course. Um, but yeah, it's a really special and like the smells coming out of the place are amazing. But it's so interesting because it's such a damp environment. Um, so to see how the whiskey reacts in that will be really, really interesting. I think I do have the big bond store though, Bill, if you want to share that one there. So Henry's also just wondering what were the size of those casks? I would, I would guess two hundreds. Uh, on the left, there were hundreds and twenties blood tubs. Hundreds and twenties. Yeah, so there's really small ones of twenties. Mm. I, I know where the photo is, but on the right hand side, we've got all our twenties stacked up. Uh, two hundreds stacked up, so. Uh, and so this is actually, I'll share this one too. Uh, it's just on my phone, so forgive me if the quality isn't that great. But this was the day of collecting the whiskey for Sam. We were madly chatting on the phone, deciding which whiskeys and how, like, yeah, which ones we should taste. Um, and Bill was like, oh, at least just go in there with the pipette and, you know, grab some bottles out. And so for a couple of hours, I just sat in the dark, covered, just like just straddling barrels all afternoon, tasting whiskeys um, and bottling them up for you guys. And that was my whole work day. So <laughs> yeah. a good idea of the mold, Sam, or not the mold, the... Um, what were you talking about, Sam, around the... Yeah, it's a kind of yeast. It's a wine yeah. yeast, typically that. It's a wild... In the... <laughs> I've learned all about yeast lately, so it's a wild ferment kind of things, and it's it develops when you've got that moist alcohol environment, and that's yeah. sort of more awesome. And this is on one of the... I want to say one of the two... Oh, no, maybe one of the 20s? Yeah, so the 20s are attracted to. So the 20s are all our finishing casks. So we don't do any full maturation in 20s, but we do a lot of the finishing in 20s just so we can get that French oak blood tubs, basically, is what they're called. Yeah. Yeah, and it really is like just barrels on barrels. And then the, just there's so many. There's just so many. It really is an experience. And yeah, it's really interesting to sort of go into the Bond store and see the different variety of casts. We've got everything from weird and wacky Hill Rock distillery ones where they've got this weird honeycomb etched interior. And then you've got the nice big old Heaven Hills and your, your French oak wine casks. And yeah, it's really cool. Like they Pinot, the Pinot Noir casts, they're French oak as well. So they're these lovely, massive, they're, they're listed as 200 leaves, but they're like 235. So it's really cool. So and whenever, if, Bill, yeah. whenever Bill needs something special, he sends me and I just like, I crawl, I just crawl around the, the bond store, like all the way up to the back and just have to climb over barrels. And I hate Jeunesse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very I hate Jeunesse, but it's, oh, it's fine. It's do, it, do it for the job. Um, Any last uh, thoughts on this whiskey here? here? No. So just had a photo sent through by David. That's lovely. David, if you oh. want to take yourself off mute, feel free to tell us about that. That's at the cellar door. I will go ahead and screen share if you don't mind. I'm going to embarrass you. <laughs> that look lovely. Oh. Beautiful. Very cute. That's in front of our cellar door. Yes. Yeah. We, uh, I took myself off mute. Sorry, I'm just still getting ready from hockey, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we with my wife and our friends from the UK last year. And, uh, we did what you said early. We went up the dirt road and kept going past <laughs> the dirt road. Then we found our way back down and uh, there was a young guy who came and opened it up for us. And while he was doing stuff, we also got to organise some food by the little bond you had out the back. Oh, right. Gee, that's mm, cool. that was 12 months ago, I want to say. Yeah, last December. Yeah, so we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have even had the, again, it's completely changed again. The distillery is this ever-evolving beast. Um, so now up that dirt road that you drove up is now a, yeah, is now the um, the brewery and some accommodation as well, which is pretty nice. And my brother, my dad and myself are coming down there in January from the 7th to the 17th. So we're going to come down and we may uh, try to organise a, a bit of the tastings. See the broth. Um, Bill, if it's all right with you, do you mind if I could I could chuck the distillery accommodation link uh, in the chat so people could yeah, yeah. have a look at that one? So that, yep. that last photo, 
Oh, we... beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. So that's the, that's the old bond shed. Mm -hmm. What about that one? People see that. Yep, they can now. So have a look over, over who's the blonde guy? Have a look at his oh, right girl. shoulder. Girl, is it? Oh, girl, no. Girl. Girl. Oh, whoopsie daisy. Girl. Sorry. I'm, I'm seeing a, a, a chopped off. There's, we're also starting a, we're, um, we're starting a collaboration with Elon Musk. <laughs> um, we're looking at rocketry. So you can see one of our rockets there on the launch pad. Look. Absolutely. Yes. Look. <laughs> so no collaboration with Elon Musk, just clearing that one up for PR. Um, so that one. one there is some yeah. kegs. And Bill has this funny, he, he loves space. He can get talking about space and the stars for hours if you let him. Um, but a couple of years ago, uh, a year ago, two years ago, um, Bill uh, built a rocket ship out of um, out of beer kegs. So that's what that is. That was awesome. I oh, no, won't be getting to space anytime soon, unfortunately. Elon Musk is not involved in that one there, but. <laughs> so just to circle back to the comments oh, some... quickly, we've yeah. had a couple of questions come in about casking. So B1, yeah. you've gone for the 200 litre cask as standard, but would you ever do small casks to allow for at least to experiment, even if it's for private distillery only yeah. release? And then we've also had, Henry has asked, uh, have you got plans for rum casks from Queensland? Okay, so no rum casks so far. Okay, we're doing brandy casts at the moment. Awesome. So we've got some brandy casts out of uh, St. Agnes in, um, in the Riverland. Um, okay, yeah, we do do 20s. Um, and in fact, we filled a whole lot of uh, 20s the other day with, with some new... Um, we, because we've got the brewery, we experiment with our, our yeast and so forth in the brewery. So we're looking at a little bit of experimentation. So we can use the 20s for that. And we do do them. We do get requests for private barreling. We tend not to do a lot of that, um, only because in a way our, our, our spirit is quite rare. And so we want to leave it in our bond store as long as we can and, and essentially manage it. Um, oh, so is that, um, sorry, Bill. Is that the so, is that the so, not soju, is that the um, pleasure? Oh. That is oh. a, that's a very rare McHenry product. Oh, yeah, hold on to that. Billy's got a bottle of the Baju. Do you remember that? Do you remember making that? Is this someone in the... In oh, the Dennis has got a photo of it there. And so Dennis had photos of the wood, very special, and the Baju, which was that red, smoky... Um, do you remember that one, Bill? Chinese sorghum spirits, it is. Yeah. Probably, probably one of the uh, most... I'm going to use the word interesting products we've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Polarizing, it was very polarizing. Yes, very. We made two different kinds. We made a uh, smoked one, which just tastes like bushfires, and the other one tastes like porridge. Mm. But worked really well in cocktails. It did. Put a bit of passion fruit through it, whip it up like that. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. Mm. We actually, sadly, because um, you know, when COVID hit, we actually redistilled that for hand sanitizer. Ah. So we've got well, this was um this was so long ago. So this was the uh, the baby, this was wow. Gosh, yeah. it looks so disorganized there. <laughs> it's a lot more, it's a lot neater and cleaner now, I promise. Um, but yeah, hold on to those photos. They're very special. That's the distillery back when it was a little little baby distillery. Mm. All right, guys. We've got some tasting notes coming out. Uh, caramel fudge on the palate from Henry. Which whiskey were you talking about there, Henry? The Tokay does have those caramel fudge kind of notes. Okay, yeah. Number three. Number three, yeah. yeah. Hang on. Very much so. What do we think? Is it time for Elisa's favourite? Please. Number four. So this is the MD48 past 22, um, what is it, five years, eight months? Yeah. So just because some of the, there is MD48 and then 48A. So to clarify that, the 48A system is our finishing system. So this is the 48A 20 litre cast. So when we do the finishing, it's A to basically F of 20s. So originally this cast wouldn't have been called 48, probably was like 27 or something like that. So that's, if anyone asked that question, I thought clarified it up pretty early, but yes, 48 and 48 A aren't related at all. I'm mm. going to share my screen, Sam, with that really great uh, spreadsheet you gave me the house. Oh, yes. Started there. Mm. Yeah, I, I do like my color coded uh, <laughs> sort of Googled things. But yeah, it's a really good thing to sort of show basically what these casks are in a nice sort of easy to read format and it gives you the age and everything and yeah I, i've got a fair few of these documents which is really cool but this one yeah this is a least favorite and 
It smells, I remember opening up the bottles when I first got them and it smells unreal. So it still does. It's got this sort of... I, mean, I love the I love the tokay on forty eight, but yeah, forty eight a that American oak is just it, it's so smooth. It's really really good. It's very special drop. I love it. Yeah. And this is a good little like work in progress of what a core release is in the works because it's already gone to its finishing stage. This is what will become probably barrel twenty two or barrel twenty three, something along that line. Mm. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Bill was just showing me something really cool. Bill, did you want to just hold that up to the camera and we'll have a little scroll? I got it for you. Really? This is it literally everything that's going on down at McHenry at the moment. Oh, like the massive document? Yeah. So it's this um, huge working Google Doc that's, oh, I don't even know how long now. And it's every barrel and where the woods come from and what the percentage was going in. And it's nice. Well, it just keeps going. I don't know if you can see oh, that, it's but it's just... Oh, it's yellow. That's why you can't see it. Yeah, can't it, see it just keeps going. <laughs> It's pretty cool to see it gets neater and neater as it goes on, like barrel one to ten. Don't look at those. But as you go on, it gets a lot better. So, yeah, it's really cool. I think it's been a really cool showcase to sort of show what different work in progress we've got. And, yeah, to showcase the different types of wood and how they really do affect the McHenry spirit. And it's really cool because it does hold up to all those different spirits. The Pinot Noir, I think someone asked about the Pinot Noir cast before. They're probably the most hot and heavy. They're, they're, they taste like strawberries and raspberries but they're super boozy and they're only about that two year old mark. So they're technically, they're legally whiskey, but they're still, they've got a long time to sort of, sort of mellow out and temper out, I think. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm getting like some really wonderful um, Asian flavors from this, like almost char siu pork. It's, uh, it's got a like soy, honey, sesame, and, and then spicy character to it that I, it might be, I might be just going crazy, but. Yeah. It would be great with cooking. Like you can make some awesome sauces out of this. It's right. And it's so different. It's so different to all the others. Right. It's such a unique little drop. And that's what I love about it. Because, um, I mean, like, again, these are all McHenry whiskeys. They've all been treated in a similar way or aged similarly on the property. But what you get is completely, like, five completely different drops. Yeah. And this one just being so unique. Mm. <laughs> Actually, I've got a really good question here. And I, this is a... This could really annoy people, but waste whiskey on a sauce? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm a big advocate of doing whatever you like with whiskey, and I will argue in a very controlled way with anyone. I think there's this massive misconception that you shouldn't do anything with whiskey, and it does annoy a lot of people, but I'm, I'm really pro do what you want and experiment because whiskey isn't made to be sat in a bottle or just drunk neat. When you actually talk to whiskey makers all around the world, they're like, you do whatever you want. And I'm, I will always be an advocate of that. And I know it won't sit well with a lot of people, but I think it is. You can mix with whiskey with Coke. And I did that during lockdown. And it was the best thing I've ever done because it was divisive. It created <laughs> and whiskey... you're getting some, You're getting some shaken heads over here. But I tangibly agree. Um, or that even, like the whole notion of whiskey is for special occasions. I mean, I'm probably a little bit biased because I work at a whiskey distillery, but... Every day is a special occasion. And if you yeah. leave it away forever, it never gets strong. So, I mean, just, exactly. you know, it's a Tuesday, have some whiskey. It's, mm. it's mm. like, especially like being, Elise and I are quite young in the whiskey industry. Mm. A lot of our generation don't want to drink whiskey neat. They're going to drink it in cocktails and highballs. With the, You see, I remember Dave Broom, we had a, re a really cool movie night with him. And he said, if Dave Broom is saying the future of whiskey is highballs, well, I'm going to trust him on that. So. I think Miranda was at that event too. So yeah, I think whiskey should be drunk wherever you like. And I know it's not going to sit with everyone, but I definitely think, look, there are certain whiskeys that I would never mix, but at the same time, why not? Enjoy it. And if you buy it, you do what you want. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you're on the nail there, Sam. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, you know, earn, work hard, earn the money, bought a whiskey. Why, why are we to tell them how they should enjoy it? I know. You know? I think the only thing you should mix whiskey with is friends. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Bill. Yeah, that sort of, it's a low, yeah, you know, we, we live in a sort of a, a, a we, we're, we're, there's more of us, but we're uh, more and more disconnected from each other. And so I think if whiskey can bring us back together again, yeah, that's even better. So. And you know what, on that sentiment, I think I'll actually say that we have just concluded the formal portion of the tasting. All of the whiskies have been tasted. All of the vital information is out there. We're going to spend the next half an hour just circling back to our previous drams. I'll be sticking around. Bill's not going anywhere. Elise and Sam are not going anywhere. So please feel free to take yourself off mute. Let's all just have a little catch up, shall we? This is the Q&A portion, shall we say. 
how do we find uh, number four though um yeah i want to is my palette aligned with everyone else's or yeah what do we think of that one i think we got some notes of let's have a look there was some chinese five spice chinese in there five which five. Is lovely. yeah chinese five spice is a really good way to put it like almost like molasses -y as well mm. i swear to god it's like it, it smells like hawker chan tastes like like um, you know that like sticky like that sticky caramel you get on some meats like that sticky caramely chinese what's that I get, I get, I know what you mean. Like hoisin, okay. hoisin sauce vibes. Yeah, yeah, kind of hoisin, but not, not hoisin. I don't get the salt in this one here. And I, I don't find it as sweet as the toke, but I just really like, I just, oh, I just really love it. It's just so interesting. And it's not, <laughs> yeah, I think I think of char siu, maybe. Char siu, that's what I said, char siu pork. Oh, there we go. Mm, mm-hmm. I still, I'm, I personally can't get over number, glass number one and glass number four. They're my, they're my picks of the evening. Yeah, number one's pretty epic. Yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. It's just got, it's so unique. It's, it's even more, it's more caramelly now. It's almost like burnt caramel. It's like butterscotch. Mm -hmm. Letting them breathe too is so interesting with whiskeys. You can come back to it a couple of minutes later and it's, yeah, it changes. It's really cool. It's, it's totally science, isn't it? Mm. Oh. So, mm. I haven't mentioned it all yet, the water. We must. We must talk about the water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, filling his waters. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're, we're pretty lucky at McHenry that we've got lots of our natural springs on the property and it's great. So basically all our, all our water that we use for all distillery operations, everything from firefighting to making cups of tea to the distilling and brewing process itself all comes from natural aquifers. And this has always been one of my favourite things to say. So, so it gets filtered through the sandstone and the dolerite that sits in, under Mount Arthur. And we've got this main aquifer at the top and it bubbles away and it's it's a stunning little place it's to put it like the best way to describe the scenery is if you look at jurassic park there's ferns and all these wonderful plants and it's wombat central and that's where our water comes from and that is the essence and it does play into the whole terroir category because that is where the source of McHenry distillery comes from and it, it trickles down the mountain and then 10 years later it comes out as whiskey once you do all the, the magic to it yeah it's exactly right it's the it's the heart of the, the whiskey and everything we do so yeah beautiful so we've got a photo just coming up of the um yeah of the springs oh there you go mm -hmm. i think there are some on our instagram as well if i remember yeah, right, yeah. yep there we are so yeah there's this beautiful like crystal clear water um and that's what we use yeah for all of our distilling so in our whiskeys and our gins in our cups of tea we shower in it that's making um, a nice cup of tea too that's yeah. a nice cup of tea um, but yeah, it's, it's just insanely clean water and it tastes, so you know, well, there's like those sayings of like hard water and soft water. So hard water is quite dense with like minerals, lots of like calcium, whereas soft water doesn't really have that. It has a different mouthfeel to hard water. Or like if you change like states or you change cities, you can usually notice a difference in the water, but you can't quite put your finger on what it is. Um, yeah, the water down is what we would describe as very, very soft water. So it's just crazy clean it's the kind of thing you have and you just remember for your whole life. And I could ramble about water all day. I, I really think it's so interesting, but I think that's a science part of me coming out. But Fun distillery facts. It makes a nice spa bath too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do have an on-site spa. Uh, very informal one, but... <laughs> my favourite thing is like, when you look at like Ross Blaney, he talks about Belveni and the runoff water and the ducks and it's all the heated pond. And I'm like, yeah, McHenry, we've got that too, but we've got an old milk churn that we fill up and have spa baths in. So that's our little connection to space side. So that is very true. That is very true. Very accurate. I'd also just like to take this opportunity to ask anybody who has a question for Bill, for Elise, or for Sam. Would you like to go ahead? I'm very sorry if I missed any questions in the comments. There was there was quite a few that I think I may have. So please don't be shy to take yourself off mute and ask this directly to these guys. No such thing as an awkward pass now. The formal portion is over. So. Yeah. Any questions, comments? Um, which whiskeys you liked? Which whiskeys you hated? anything what type of condensers do we use that's a good Ooh. question um that's the one for bill it's the tube in tube yeah so it's not it's not a call it's a tube in tube so all of our condensers are tube in tube and to get real nerdy it's the, the down sloping line arm so. so did you say a down descending line arm as well yeah yes. yeah no. the reflux going on there making yeah. spirit work hard yeah, exactly and what if you go for the tube and tube uh, it's more efficient. more efficient. I mean, basically, uh, you know, you'll find most modern um, condensers are tube and tube. So they are super efficient. Um, 
I reckon, actually, we use Nap Lua, which is a Tasmanian. Classic. Yeah. I don't reckon he makes any uh, coil type condensers that I can think of. Unless he probably make it on demand. But he's a German engineer, so he does everything super. So, you know, ultimately, once we once we once the spirits rise up over the arm, we want to basically bring it back to liquid form. So we want the most efficient way. Yeah, makes sense. Mm. Have I answered your question there, Henry? Oh. Does anyone use worm tubs in Oz? Great oh, question, yes. actually. Yeah, I don't know of anyone. Sullivan's Cove do. Oh, they yeah, they do. oh, they've got yeah. a big tub. Yeah. 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 I didn't know they did. There you go. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool there. So, brandy still. Yeah, I was just going to say they use an ex cognac still, and yeah. they've got, um, yeah, tubs. Mm. Totally unique. Totally I think unique. I agree with David. The four one three five two order. Well, vaguely, it's it's like picking between your children. It's tricky, but you can do it. Um, and yeah, number four, it was just so special for me. I'd have to agree with you, David, but I might swap three and two. I love the tropical notes on two. Really, especially coming into like a warmer weather, yeah. Definitely. I think experiment cast is always going to be a favorite for me, so two is definitely up there. I think, yeah, four, four, and two. And then, look, I don't like to pick favorite whiskies because I like all whiskies, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very true, very true. Um, actually, I've got a question for Bill, yeah, 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 um, and was, this is just a, this is just something that I was asking them and mean to ask you anyway. Um, when do we have number four? Well, are we, yeah, when will we be planning to release that one there, do you reckon? 48A. Uh, I'd have to go back, to be honest, Elise, because we've mm. got a few hundreds to get out, which we, we've basically got blocking at the moment. Couldn't ask her. Couldn't ask her. Speaking um, of blocking, though, what, what, are you, what are your methods for that? Do you, do you do the Sullivan's Cove method, like the nursery? You just let it sit there every, every two weeks or so, you add a little bit more water, you, you baby it? No, we're a little bit more... Um, Gung-ho? Yeah. You know, look, <laughs> um, I, look, I think floppy is flavour. Me too. The problem is that on the eye, it looks, you know, it looks a bit... Dirty. You know, well, not dirty, but you do get, like, yeah. so we... So it is a premium uh, whiskey. And, yeah, lots of people, they see flock in a in a whiskey and they think it's... I don't know. But, yeah, I agree. Flock is flavour. If you see flock and whiskey, don't be scared off at all. It's no. the best bit. It's, Yeah. I would get a weekly call from lots of bottle shops around Victoria being like, oh, there's stuff in my whiskey. I was like, that's all good. That's it's the point. <laughs> yeah. And the question, do we chill filter? No, we don't. No. Simple and as that. No. So we actually say. Yeah, I was going to read that out. Any, any cloudiness or sediment is natural. This whiskey is in its purest form. On the back of all McHenry bottles on the little whiskey passport they've got on the back there. It never quite focuses for me, but maybe this time it will if I do the influencer thing and put my hand behind it. <laughs> Not quite working, but it says it right there on the back of the whiskey passports that is on all McHenry bottlings. And flock shots just came out from Overeem. They, I think it's just behind oh, okay. you somewhere wow. there. But they, 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 yeah, <laughs> definitely grab some. Yeah, it's pretty cool that one. Bill, you're rating their bar. Bill. It's cool to see that the sort of mentality is changing towards like flocked flocking and all that. I think. It's cool to see that like the Australian public is sort of warming to what basically what comes out of the barrel. Like it's cool to see those stuff that East Chillfield isn't 40% because it's great. It's consistent, but it doesn't have the character of what those single casts basically just straight out of the barrel things have. Oh, um, You're going to be able to catch this on the camera, but we've got the over in flock shots just here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's beautiful. You've seen that there? It's gotten real cloudy and beautiful. It's all started to marry together. But, but for the general consumer, they don't like that, you see. They want basically honey, crystal clear, glowing sort of thing, which yeah. is sad in a way because they're missing out. Um, so it's, uh, it's unfortunately just age-old marketing, you know. If you see something on the shelf and this one's clear and this one's cloudy and this one's a different colour, you're going to be like, oh, one's inferior and one's better than the other, you know, but when that's just not true at all. No, um, if you see a cloudy whiskey, buy a cloudy whiskey. Like the flock is flavour and it's, it's the best bit. Easily and tasting like a, a like a flock heavy whiskey versus your crystal clear honey gorgeous whiskeys, yeah, there there is a very obvious difference between the two. Things can change though. Like um, I don't know if people drink a lot of beer. Obviously, I'm known for drinking a lot of beer, but um, hazy IPAs have become, you know, the the top top beer style, and they're hazy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They even have brewers 
um, not filtering their normal beers just so they're hazy because it's desired now, whereas in the past it was absolutely scorned. Mm. Really, yeah, even like Cider World. Like, we cloudy, just, cloudy, yeah. I gave Miranda a taste last night. We just made a scrumpy and it is cloudy as anything and it's great because we don't filter it. It's basically in its purest form. It tastes mm. so much better with all the residual. It does. It's, yeah, it's really got those. Yeast. It makes, it makes in its purest form what alcohol is and I think that's that's really cool. It's so interesting how the attitude's changing though, but it's so great to see it change. People are appreciating Brewery with first and juice cloudy ales. Oh, it's very cool. Didn't know that one there. But um, just the attitudes towards stuff in your drink. Mm. Yeah, we're seeing a real shift in the in the mindset these days, and it's actually so welcome. It's, it's so long overdue. Yeah. So you were just about to say oh, something sure. about well, as well. Coop, Cooper's had a little marketing campaign so you, you where they used to get roller, you know, to get the yeast up. And there's a really, I can't think of the brand is, but in France, there's a super popular, highly flocked whiskey. And it's now it's now sought after. Ah. So it, we do see this big shift happening, it's which is great. Not the mm. I can't remember. I was there a couple of years ago and I saw it in whiskey. What's called um, House of Whiskey. Whiskey taker on those? The House of Whiskey. House of Whiskey. All yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. And um, mm. they had it there and they, they said, look, if you can produce more of this, uh, we'll take lots of it. You're living. Mm. Mm. So what do you think <laughs> has paired the best with the sweet coffins today? Is anybody loving it with this cider? So I'm thinking glass number one straight away. We, we nailed it with the first one. I think glass number one as well. I think it does hold up. And yeah, because normally you wouldn't pair sweet drinks with whiskey, but I think this one does really quite hold up because it does have that beautiful zestiness and it's quite spritzy and carbonated. It's a good palate cleanser as well between whiskeys. Oh, for sure. It's, it's sweetness was very much coming from the fruit, not, not a sugary artificial sweetness, which was would normally put me off a lot of sweet ciders, though. Yeah, and that's sort of dry ciders. But it's the beauty of using 100% pressed apples instead of using that rectified apple juice that most Australian cideries do use. So, and it is the it's the joys of using heritage apples. It's a, it's a beautiful blend of sweet coppin, Kingston Blacks. Is that CO2 carbonated on volume? I I got to do that last week, and it is an absolute pain. So <laughs> it's all hand carbonation. The fill levels aren't going to be the same. But yeah, it's, actually, it's a blend of actual, you'll like this, Jason. It's a blend of uh, CO2 and nitrogen. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, oh, okay. yeah. What do you think about the four now with some, so someone, Ma, Michael has added some water. Um, how do you find that one now with um, the water number four, given it's my favourite ever? What do we think about that one there now? Um, I, look, I, I think it's opened up the flavour for me a lot more. It was probably, number four was petering on the, the least favourite out of the five for me mm. um but um adding those couple of drops of water it sort of opened that flavor profile a lot more for me um mm. it feels mm. a lot better on the uh, on the palate um so okay. yeah it's uh, i mean the the full strength was yeah it was a lot drier on my palate so um i sort of giving me a giving me a better mouth feel on it so uh, mm. so it doesn't sit as dry on the palate so no, I know. I don't. And again, it's it's so personal. Whiskey is so personal, and it's what you like. And yeah, and I, again, I am spoiled enough to work here and drink this every day. But um, and same with Sam too. Sometimes I wonder how tainted our palates are from just being so spoiled with whiskey. Yeah, I suppose we are pretty lucky to sort of work for distilleries, <laughs> these really yeah. amazing whiskey bars, and get to try all these of course. Cool <laughs> You poor things. <laughs> it's been a tough life, John. It's it's been such a, a hard job. Oh. Very, very tough life. Very tough life. It is, I know, and, and you're getting into it now, so you're going to have to experience that toughness as well. So congratulations, we're here, well we're done. Here for <laughs> uh, you should come down to um, you should come down to McHenry's and write it off as a tax write off. It's <laughs> well, actually, truth <laughs> be told, um, I was hoping to get down there last time when I was there for Tassie Whiskey Week, but we just ran so short on time, like. Well, that press for activities, uh, yeah, back in last year's, um, yeah, Tassie Whiskey Week, that we just couldn't get ourselves down there. But on the to-do list, the the, um, the second that we can get down there, mm. yeah, definitely, definitely be meaning to come down. So, oh yeah, it's a beautiful. And Bill, if you don't mind, I think he's always having a chat. Um, I can pop the. Or oh, Sam, would you mind oh, doing it? Um, I think. Yeah. Oh, have I got him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got his attention. <laughs> um, would you mind if either Sam or I put the link to the to our accommodation in the um, in the chat so people can have a look at the yeah, yeah. well it's 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 Airbnb 
Mm. So, um, yeah, go for it. And at the moment, it's the brewer's cabin that's available. Just the brewer's? So we have two cabins. We've got the brewer's cabin, which is um, like on level with the distillery and the brewery. But then up top is the view that we saw before. So that one overlooking all the way to um, Kunani, Mount Wellington. Both beautiful, though. Um, so we should have the the top one ready soon, hopefully. Yeah, we're just waiting for the uh, occupancy certificates from the council for that. It's yeah. only a week or two away. Bit of red tape, of course. But yeah. then the, for the bottom one, um, the brewer's cabin's ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, will you be in Melbourne this May, Bill? Will you be in Melbourne this May? Oh God! Whiskey live. Oh, if it's on, I will. <laughs> I don't think he can think that far ahead. That's the. That's the challenge, actually, is trying to program things now because you don't know if things are going to go ahead. Mm. We committed to a whole lot of events and obviously they've been called off. Yes. You know? um, so, yeah, you, you'll see more of us on the mainland um, because now we sort of, originally we're, we, you know, a young distillery, we had only small amounts, so you didn't hear a lot of us. Now we've actually got a lot of product coming out. So you'll start to see us more and more at events, tastings. Awesome. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's changed between batches. It's true that the gold and McHenry Christmas gin change between batches. It doesn't seem to be as glittery as it used to be. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. No, it has changed. Um, so we're using a, 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 a micronized form, so it's much, much finer. The old gold would basically fall out of solution within about, well, I say fall out, it would shake it up and it would have a lovely glitter and then it would drop out immediately. Yep. The new so actually hangs a lot longer. Suspended in the liquid. Yeah, more, so yeah. Uh, it does need to catch more light to get the effect. But when you do... Get um, I find without that in the sun is the best. Um, yeah. A big like, upside down shake, like a, a fair shake with that one there. But um, yeah, the change was made for, partially for aesthetics. We wanted it to hang in the, like, in the solution a lot longer. And we found that this microdized yeah. uh, gold did that, do what we wanted. Um, so there is... It, I think the glitteriness of it is a tricky thing to kind of scale, um, but it's just like it's a different glitter. You are right; it is a different gold. So but at least in the sun, you, for that one there. A few complaints over there, but we'll, you look, it's it, once once you if you can find a shard of light and you hold it in the light, it will actually you, you'll fall in love with it. Mm, in the sun, it really is a completely different spirit. It's no, it's a bit hard to sort of see it now. Yeah. I think uh, my favourite thing always to do was just throw the phone light on and chuck it under the bottle. Mm. I still yeah. remember last year's yeah. tasting, yeah. seeing like hardcore whiskey nerds get so excited over glittery gin. <laughs> <laughs> it's still one of my career highlights, I think. Like, I think Dom's Everyone left. Does. Love Everyone it. loves it. Um, uh, with, the, with the new one, though, the phone light doesn't work as well, unfortunately. Yeah. It has to be, or it doesn't have to be, but it's. Um, I found it's his best in the natural sunlight. Um, I, know, I know Dom's jumped off, but... Dom's probably one of like the most whiskey like loving people I know, and he bought so many bottles of that glittery Christmas gin. It was awesome. <laughs> Is he still here? Yeah. Dom's still on? No, he's jumped off. But I remember he sent some back to Canada with him when he went back to visit the family. Oh, nice. That's great. If you just have a look in the chat as well, I popped in the Airbnb link uh, yep. to the accommodations. That one there, um, I was good. Thank you for that question. No, of course. And yeah, you're completely right. It is a different gold. So. Return customer, which is good. Um, the the flavor of the gin should be the exact same though. Yeah, it's the same yeah, gold, for instance, a little bit of clove. Um, but yeah, so the taste completely unaffected, but the gold is different. Mm. Yeah, yeah. we were up. ultimately we were trying to do a little bit different, you know, because it's the everyone that's sort of walking the same old route. Christmas pudding makes a Christmas gin. And oh, if I see another Christmas pudding or like a gingerbread. Yeah. Well, I find personally, I don't drink them apart from December. And um, yeah, it's like you drink it for, you know, for Christmas month and then I wouldn't touch it for the rest of the year. Um, but yeah, whereas like the Christmas gin, I much more, like, it's just, it's a great little G&T drop as well. So something that can be drunk, I'm um, not exclusively at Christmas time, but that's just a personal, um, how does everyone else feel about that one there? It makes really, to, to sort of uh, be on brand and one of my favorite people are to use Fe Fever Tree, Elderflower Tonic, and uh, mm, that yeah, is a good you've just been a big advocate for that. But it also makes brilliant, like, uh, basically bougie gimlets because you get the gold circling around, stuff like that. And martinis, it works well too. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. So I guess I'd like to actually ask Bill, because I, I know that there was a 10-year-old that was on the horizon. Yeah. And 
It's there? Yeah, it's well, there. within months, you know. You, you reckon? Because I heard that there was like, you know, you weren't quite sure about it. You're not going to release something that you're not 100% happy with, which yeah. I totally respect and I love that. So I was just wondering about what the future is, is looking like for that. Yeah, so, it, it, you know, it's hard because every bottle that we release carries my name. Yeah. And so, um, you know, before we do, you know, any release, but certainly special releases, I want to be completely satisfied. Now, Sam will tell me, you know, this is great, fantastic, Elise, lovely, you know, Bill 2 will tell me, yeah, yeah, it's ready. But even though I'll get all of these people sort of lined up saying, yeah, it's good, until I'm absolutely sure, we won't let it go. Which I think is like equally the best thing and the most frustrating thing about working um, here. <laughs> is that, yeah, is that he's as stubborn as he is a perfectionist in the sense that nothing gets by until Bill is like, yep, this is perfect. We can release it. Barrel, so, Barrel 20 got by. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty happy about that one. Yeah. Barrel 20 was just a bypass of B1 and B2 it was like, yeah, we'll, we'll release it. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. You know, truly, I am. I, you know, I like the feedback I get from them all. Mm. Uh, it's sort of, you know, you have to actually deep down, have a look at the core of our business and what we are. And ultimately, we're trying to create a, a legacy. Um, we're a family-owned business run by myself and my wife, you know, with really great staff that, that are you know, helping us build this business. But I want to be able to leave this to my children and my children's children, et cetera. This is not this is not a business I want to build, build and spin. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to flip this business. It basically wants to be. I want it left to my children. So you've got this lovely lineage, you know, generation after generation McHenry. So it is important for me to think that I'm doing the right thing now for my children, yeah. just like we all should be doing the right thing for the planet. You know, for everyone. Um, so it is very big picture, man, Bill. Which I. Um, I think working here is something that I've noticed throughout the years um, is that it's it's always big picture um, and it's always, um, well, where will we be in five years' time? Where will we be in 10 years' time? Like, what will be the outcome of this? Where, yeah, which is it's just so exciting. And it, it keeps the distillery. We're always doing something. We're always busy, which is good. But mm. I'm going to put it out there as well. Guys, we've got about five or six minutes left before the tasting has concluded. So... Any final questions or comments, please do not be shy at this point. There's not that many of yeah. us. There's, there's 21 of us left, so shoot away. Shoot away, guys. Comments, criticisms, which ones did you hate? Which ones did you love? We, we, we Miranda, we started to do brandy now too. So we, um, we're doing all the brandy for Joseph Cromie. So we're taking nice. on a lot of their excess wine and we're producing yeah. um, a collaboration brandy with them. So we've got that down. We've actually got a couple of bottle, barrels of brandy, which is, I can't remember, it's five or six years. So we've still got a few years to go when we can release as an XO. All right. So we'll have some, hopefully some nice, uh, <laughs> nice Australian brandy. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to rewatch this taste. You'll be like, this was announced, this was announced, this was announced, this yeah. was announced. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Because yeah. some of my, my favourite brandy in the world is Tasmanian brandy. It's a Sullivan Scope EXO double cask. Well, that EXO double cask, what happened was originally they had, because their big still is 2,000 litre still. That's fun. So they gave us all the fours and paints. They didn't. So, yeah, yeah. So we, we had, oh, we had, you know, five, 600 litres of fours and paints, which they couldn't oh, distill wow. down any further because yeah. their still was too big. So we put that through our little 500 litre still and created brandy from that. That's so exciting. So, um, so that's what currently is in our cup of Pinot barrels at the moment. So, and I think the Exo Double Cast is Pinot as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yes. So, mm. so we just had some comments here, Bill. Um, don't go to the whiskey down to plum gin, wax favourite. I completely agree. It's a great little drop. Um, with that one there, though, especially with like a dry sparkling white wine to make kind of like a spritz, incredible in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, and then number four, the fifth, is all... Gingerbread or oh, ginger shortbread. Very interesting. I don't think I have any of that one left to smell, but great little job. Uh, Dave, the, uh, the the damson plum ran out for a month or two, but we we, we just bottled some today. How oh, beautiful. Oh, it's weird uh, to for a minute. Mm. Victoria is the only place in Australia that still has it. So we still have quite a bit here. 
So because we don't have any down much. here, and I'm about to get lynched. So, some yeah, so that was the number five, the fifth one on the nose. You getting Christmas pudding? Maybe. Oh, so number four is in like the one we taste, or number four is oh. in, in the lineup. Mm. Oh, last one, yeah. Last one. Mm. That's that classic okay. port finish. Port finish, yeah, that makes sense. Parliament House Gin is Henry's, yes. Um, and so in Canberra as well, so in Parliament House, um, that's where you can get our courtyard gin, which is a very saffrony gin, and the um, parliamentary, or it's the Federation gin, so all Australian natives, which is a really great little story. So um, a different Australian native from every state and territory. So this is like very bushy, very herbal, heavy gin. And um, yeah, if you can get your hands on that one there, I highly recommend it. It's very interesting. It's very savoury, but it's like very earthy, bushy. It's great. We were serving that one on the bar. It was the enamoured as our uh, classic gin and tonic. So oh, if you, if you, yeah, we were. Mm. I, I remember after the bushfire boilermaker appeal, McKenry was yeah. enough to donate a pretty sure a case plus to that. And yeah. then uh, the boilermakers didn't get sold out. So that was actually, that was our house poured gin for quite a few months. And I've Tell you what, it was a fantastic response. People loved it. And yeah. I was off, people were like, what happened? Yeah, Where is beautiful it? house call. That that, oh. that was another career highlight. Sort of work together with the bushfire reliefs, especially for the Victorian. Yeah, mm. I think I think this is probably a really good chance to say thank you to Whiskey and Almond, as this is the last tasting virtually for the year. I think a big credit has to go to Miranda. You've done an amazing job. I think personally, like I've been to every single one except the first one, and it has brought a little bit of normality and like structure to our weeks and talking last night to people it yeah you brought a little bit of whiskey now into all our homes and that is honestly one of the yeah i appreciate it so much so thank you you've done an amazing job and yes it's been lovely and i think yeah i think let's have a bit of a toast because <laughs> it's been an amazing it's been a really tough year but in a weird way these have been a great little bit of normality and yeah it's really so cheers to whiskey now and a big thank you to miranda cheers and also cheers to the birthday boy and thank you Ooh, for your last birthday boy McHenry's. Mate, thank it was an absolute pleasure to hear you tonight with these uh, with this lineup. It was such an amazing lineup as well to finish off on. So all the best to your future endeavors and mate, keep up the amazing work. From thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure of a year and a half. It's yeah, sad to go, but it's the start of a new journey. So that's how I'm looking at it. Always gonna be positive. Moving into a different kind of alcohol, but look, I'm always going to be around at bars. As everyone knows, I love a tasting, so I'm, I'm always going to be at a tasting. So, but yes, so a big thank you to everyone. And yeah, thank you for coming tonight. It's been, a, it's been an absolute pleasure. And to Bill, to Elise, to everyone down there, going to miss everyone, but starts a new chapter of Cider Man Sam. And I think <laughs> I've been working on this quote all week. Any basketball fans out there, to quote the great LeBron James, I've decided to take my talents to Dalesford. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, it's going to be, it's really cool. And yeah, pretty keen to sort of follow the uh, McHenry story along the way. The fact, like there's three Alpha, there's three Southern Cross series whiskeys still to go. And that was a real personal highlight to work on those. So yeah, yeah definitely going to keep a keen eye on those. And yeah, it's going to be good. Of course, of course. And yeah, on behalf of Bill and I as well, it's been a pleasure working with you, Sam. Oh, thank um, you. Happy birthday. Thank you for all thank you. Well. Thank you. But it's, it's, it'll be so exciting to have you down again, but as a punter, and you can just sit back and not work and have a bev with us. It'll be great. Exactly. It'll be nice. So, yeah, very sad to go. But, oh, well, that's the that, <laughs> best way to put it. That's life, and you learn, you live. And, yeah, I've been very ex lucky to sort of manage to get a new job in the alcohol industry. And cider is another love of me. So, yeah, thank you to everyone. I think the reason I do this, and I think the reason a lot of us do this, isn't because of the whiskey. It's about the people. So, Thank you all for coming and thank you for all supporting not just Whiskey and Element, not just McHenry, but all these events, all Australian bars and tastings throughout COVID, especially to all the people in Victoria. Like I know there's a, this is a blatant shout out, but I know there's a few doctors in here who have been at the front line. So big thank you to all that. And to all of us in Melbourne, we've, we've done it hard, but we did a bloody good job. And now we can actually go drink at a bar. So cheers <laughs> and Hamish, that one's for you. So cheers. enjoy everyone and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Of course. And, and look, you'd like to close with a, a real public acknowledgement of what Sam's done for our business. Um, look, I'm, I'm really proud that you've, you, you're moving on in the cider industry. It's fabulous. Uh, but the passion you showed for our products, um, the commitment you had for us has just been, you know, genuinely awesome, Sam. So we'll catch up tomorrow. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I think the best for me, great. my role officially ends as McHenry Ambassador, but at heart, I'll always be 
yeah. and ambassador for McHenry. So always going to be, I'll always have slow gin around. And yeah, but definitely it's been a great ride and I've loved every minute of it. It has been an absolute pleasure. You've always been waving that McHenry flag high and proud ever since I've known you. You've been an asset to the bar, an asset to the industry. Thank you so much. And to echo Sam's sentiments, thank you so much to everyone that, that has attended, kept the bar alive this entire time. Thank you to Elise for your insight tonight and so much to Bill for joining us here and for Cheers. your insight as well. Everybody, I, I actually couldn't think of a better way to wrap up the year. The last virtual tasting. Happy birthday to Sam. Here, here's to 2021. Cheers, everybody. Merry Christmas. Cheers. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thank you. Of course. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, wait. We've got one more question here. One quick one for Henry. <laughs> Whiskey matured in apple <laughs> cider <laughs> cast. <Whoa. laughs> A little whiskey, old little cider man, Sam McHenry crossover episode. What do you think, Bill? Oh, look. I, we'll bring, I'm into it. I'm into it. I'm down. We'll bring back Whiskey Wednesdays and Sunday sessions and bring it back. But <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Always open to that. Of course. That'd be great. And thank you so much to everyone for writing such kind comments. I, I so appreciate your patronage and I've so loved being a part of your whiskey journey. So, uh, yeah, cheers to everybody. And, and thank you again, Sam. Happy birthday. And thank you. everyone. We'll, we'll see you all soon. Bye. Cheers. Bye guys. Cheers. Have a lovely evening. See ya. Bye.